Hello everyone, we're very pleased to present you today the results of our study on the market perspectives of ground segment as a service. So first, let's try to define what is ground segment as a service. So one first thing that we can say is that it aims to answer the needs and the pains of the different satellite operators. So in order to communicate with the satellites, they need to have a ground segment. But in order to build such um, infrastructure, you need specific uh, resources such as financial and human resources. And also, on top of that, you actually need to go through a certain number of constraints, especially regulatory, because you need the licensing to be able to build and operate your uh, ground segment. So all of these hurdles have made it uh, pretty difficult for satellite operators to build their own ground segment, which is the reason why they have outsourced it for many decades now. But the thing is that with new space satellite operators, all the outsourcing activities were not specifically adapted to their needs because they had smaller satellites and smaller budgets. So in order to answer these needs and fill in this gap in this market, the ground segment as a service was created. So it's a one-stop shop solution that abstracts and mutualizes all the infrastructure for ground segment activities, especially the ground station. So Doing so, it enables uh, the satellite operators to uh, switch from CAPEX to OPEX. All of this enabling them in the end to really focus on the core of their business, which is Biosense data. Considering all these perspectives, various actors have entered the GSAS market uh, in the next uh, in the past few years. So basically, you have new startups such as Infostellar or RBC Signals, but also LeafSpace. You have IT-born companies such as AWS and the newly announced Microsoft. But you also have ground segment incumbents such as SSC or KSAT. That being said, it is interesting to have a look at how the satellite operators make their decision to um, select actually a GSAS provider. So first, one thing to keep in mind is the fact that it is really based on their operational needs. So for example, um, depending on the mission type, you will have different uh, criteria. So for example, if you're a NEO company, you will tend to look for a GSS provider that can download a lot of um, data for you and that can provide near real time uh, like uh, uh, images. Whereas if you're an IoT company, you will look for low latency communications. Depending also on the entity type. So basically, if you're a private or a public uh, entity will tend to favor pricing or uh, security aspects, for example. Also, if you have your own ground stations, you will also use GSAS differently as a backup solution, for example. And also, the, depending on the satellite orbit, you will also tend to use GSAS or not. So basically, if you're a geo satellite, you will not necessarily use GSAS uh, solutions. So as we have said, depending on your needs, you will have different criteria. You will value more or less. So we spoke about pricing, security aspects, but also reliability. If you're having GSS as a backup solution, you will not necessarily look for super high uh, reliability, which is not the case when you don't have your own uh, ground segment. So all of this enables um, satellite operators to really select what uh, is the best uh, GSAS provider to them according to their needs. So, for example, if you're an IoT company, uh, you look for a high amount of contacts. So you will uh, possibly tend to look for a GSAS provider that can provide you with uh, like stations that are yours and that are dedicated to your activities and not necessarily shared. But also if you have like specific communications using specific frequency uh, bands, you will also uh, tend to look for a GSAS provider that can answer your needs. So it's interesting to have a look at what's going on right now uh, in the GSAS market, but it's also very interesting to have a look at what could happen in the market, especially having a look at the different drivers. So what we have seen uh, studying um, this subject is that there are 
uh, possibly new uh, users of GSAS that could be observable in the future, notably from the public entity side. So we have seen that most of the public entities using GSAS today are based in the US, but we can expect that this could be also observable outside the US over time. Also, we can we can we have seen that emerging space agencies could also be interested uh, because they do not necessarily have the capex upfront uh, to invest in in GS uh, like uh, infrastructure. So they could also possibly be interested in GSAS. And actually, the MOU signed between uh, the Ecuadorian Space Agency and RBC Signals is a sign of it. Also, you can have different missions that could be uh, supported by GSAS, such as low latency applications, but also deep space and lunar uh, missions, which is also something that we have observed between the partnership on possible partnerships between IVC and uh, the Ecuadorian Space Agency and the um, in the in the frame of uh, the CELP, which is a program, a lunar program. And also we can imagine that large internet connect internet constellations could be users of GSAS in the future. But it also, in, in order to uh, answer all of these needs and all of these new uh, like needs of, uh, of customers, the suppliers will have to adapt. They will have to adapt providing new services, but also enhanced services. So we have seen that public uh, and military entities could be interested in using GSS, but this will all will only happen if the suppliers can uh, offer um, a sufficient level of security. Also, in order to answer new uh, missions such as deep space or lunar missions, you will uh, have um, as a supplier to provide um, like the services using uh, infrastructure that are um, that enable such such activities with, for example, deep space antennas. So in order to uh, answer all of these new needs uh, with the new services, we can expect that the suppliers will have to adapt um, using different enablers that can come from regulation, technologies, but also partnerships. So, for example, for the technologies, we can imagine that artificial intelligence, flat panel antennas, but also optical communications will have a positive influence on the suppliers because, for example, the artificial intelligence will enable, for example, onboard processing uh, on the satellites in space so that all the data that is downloaded is only exploitable data so that it can optimize the use of antennas on the ground. Also, partnerships are expected to have a very positive influence on the GSS because all the GSS providers that decide to partner with specialists, for example, security specialists such as SISEC, um, will provide, for example, leaf space with capability to uh, offer uh, more cyber secured communications. Also, uh, there is the partnership between, for example, AWS and A Atlas, but also ARBC that provides Atlas and RBC with um, data storage, processing and analysis to the customers of Atlas and RBC. So in order to conclude, we can say that the GSS market is uh, expected to continue growing. Um, as we have seen, uh, we can imagine that the uh, demand will continue to increase and that in order to answer such demand, the suppliers will have to adapt as we have seen um, relying on uh, technologies, but also partnerships. We uh, can thus imagine that there will not be like a massive uh, um, adoption of GSAS, but however, we can imagine there will be a cohabitation between the two, between uh, satellite operators having their own ground segment satellite operators relying entirely on GSAS and some hybrid uh, satellite operators using both their own ground segment, but also uh, using sometimes GSAS provider services. So we can say that as more and more satellites operators are, are emerging and will continue to emerge uh, in the space industry, we can imagine that the GSAS will continue to make access to space easier However, the decision to invest or not in a proprietary uh, ground segment will remain the decision of satellite operators uh, using a thorough uh, make or buy decision. So we are very happy uh, to have presented you uh, this, uh, like the results of our work and uh, 
we would be very happy to, to discuss this further with you. So do not hesitate to contact us, Berelia and I, uh, in order to get the whole paper, but also to, to, to simply discuss. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.